Welcome back to Front Kick Online. My name is Asha Tafari and this is Kicking It with Asha. Today I'm joined by the reigning, defending FCR Bantamweight champion Felipe de Oro Lima. Hey. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me, bro. <laughs> and uh, as I mentioned, you're the FCR champion in the Bantamweight division and uh, you are the first one who won the belt in that organization. That's the uh, most premier title, I think, in the yeah. Nordic region right now. Uh, must have been cool for you to, to get that uh, spot to, to be the first guy to, to be the yeah, champion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Take me back to that moment uh, when you knocked out Ednor... Ed... <laughs> that was <laughs> good. Ev oh, man. Evgeny, wait. Evgeny, Evgeny, Evgeny. Evgeny, Evgeny Ognorog, okay. Evgeny Ognorog. Uh, it was a quick fight. Yeah, yeah, so I got so happy for the win, but also I got a little bit sad because I, I wanted to do more so yeah. because I had a long camp for this fight, for that fight, and uh, I didn't have time to show what I have learned more, you know, mm. more skill and everything, but yeah, it is what it is. I got the, the KO in the 35 seconds, yeah. so just be happy. <laughs> you, you landed a knee to, to the body and... Yeah. The, he it took uh, like a few minutes for him to, to get up, get up on his feet. Yeah, uh, he he was uh, like uh, grasping for air. Uh, was there a moment when, like, obviously you, you feel very happy yeah, in that yeah. moment, but then when you see him lying there on the floor having trouble to breathe, was there yeah. like oh shit, like uh, like that kind of moment for you? Yeah. So everybody that fight is a human being. So. Uh, in the end of the day, we are a normal person, you know. Mm. So after the fight, and I, of course, I just wanted him to back safe to his family, you know. And I, when I saw him on the ground, he screaming with pain. So I feel a little bit sad, no. But that's part of the game, and uh, I just show respect for him and I care about him, you know. So, mm. but that's how it is. Yeah. And it, that was your second fight in the Fight Club Rush. Yeah. Uh, so. Right now you are like the guy in that organization and, and you, you've been made eventing their shows twice here. Uh, they're broadcasting on UFC Fight Pass. What are your thoughts on that organization and fighting for them? Yeah, really, I really like to work with Fight Club Rush. I think they are a really good organization. They are, uh, everything's organized and uh, how I, I like how they work. So for me, I feel very happy to fight in that organization and we just have to grow, you know. And, I'm just happy to be there, you know, and uh, to be honest, this organization is much better than others on other ones oh, yeah? in Scandinavia, so I'm just happy to work with them. Yeah. Talk to me about the training at All Stars. Uh, you've been there for how long now? <coughs> for one year now. One year? Yeah, yeah. So the training in All Stars is a really good training, it's high level training, and uh, since when I moved to All Stars, I'm a different fighter, a different mentality as well. So that's what I was looking for a long time. You know, mm. I was looking for a gym that I, I can train in and have a different coach, like Thai coach, box coach, and physical as well. Yeah. So everything that I was looking for, I found in All Star. So I'm just happy to be there as well. Mm. And also, you have like lots of guys in your own size. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Close and, to your and weight. You have this as well. A lot of sport. Partners. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of guys in banter weight as well. So that that make really good training for us. So. Yeah. And one video on the Front Kick channel uh, is you versus Reza in like a gym war, like yeah, a really yeah. hard sparring. And, uh, you know, uh, it's quite often that you have those kind of hard sparrings at us, right? Yeah, 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 it uh, is. How often, like uh, one, uh, every week, do you spar there? So we have a sp sp sparring, MMA sparring, Tuesday and Thursday. So it's two times a week. Mm. And uh, we do some hard training there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we kill each other, but that's the go that's the price to be a champion, you know. Mm. And uh, and some people doesn't like that because. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I just believe in hard work, man. Right. I, I, of course, you can't uh, kill you, kill each other every day, mm. but two times a week is okay, you know. Yeah, okay. But of course, you need to use protection as well to don't get a cut and something, whatever, you know. Mm. So you need to be protected all the time, mm. you know. Talking about Hamza Chimaev, he's obviously the rising star over there. You have also a few other guys like Guran Kutadlaz, he's yeah. a UFC fighter, and 
Alex, having Hamzat and these other guys like uh, to look up to, to yeah. see them training every day and train <laughs> alongside them. What does that do for for you uh, and like your own motivation in your own career? Yeah, this motivates me a lot because I remember when I came to Ulster in the last year, I saw Hamzat and. Uh, I started to see him train every day and fight like five times, six times a day. Mm. I said, damn, that's okay. This is a, ch a different type of guy now. Mm. That's why this guy's an animal and all. That's why he's going to be a champion one day yeah. because he put hard work. And when I saw that, this opened up my, 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 my mentality as well. I, I, I changed my mentality, you know? So, mm. so this helped me a lot to have this guy by my side, to train with them. We, I, we, I learned a lot with them. So really great to be there with these guys yeah and also like he holds you guys accountable as well right yeah, like the the training partners the guys coming up like i've been talking to for example by sangur makayev and yeah he's like uh, if you just train one session it comes up will come ask you like why are you only train one exactly. session like yeah, this. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they come up after you to to, to <laughs> ask you why yeah. you're not training so right it's like a big father big brother you know like mm. older brother so it's nice yeah when did you come to Sweden? Because you were in Gothenburg the first couple of months or how long? So I came to Sweden in 2019, but I first city I came to Helsingborg. Yeah, okay. I came because I got invited from my friend, yeah, Mauro Salomon. He, he's from Helsingborg. He's from Brazil, but he lives in, in, in Sweden for almost 10 years. Oh, yeah. So, so I... I came just to try how, just to see how it is in Sweden, you know? and of course I didn't like, did see much because Helsingborg is a small town, and mm -hmm. uh, it took me like one year to wake up and see that the thing, uh, what I was looking for was in, Esto in Stockholm and not oh, yeah. in Helsingborg, so, and then I live in different city, in Helsingborg, Hamstad, and Gothenburg was the last one, and then I decided to move to, to Stockholm. And never looked back. No, no, no. It was the best choice. Yeah. Yeah. So how does the training here in Stockholm compare to when you were uh, in Brazil training? Because you're from Brazil. So. Yeah. In Brazil, the, it's really good training as well. But the thing here, what is, makes good in Sweden, like always I say that, that they have a lot of people from other countries. No? So mm. uh, many people like from Russia, from Albania, from Greece, you know, everywhere. So that's why I make the, the training... It's good. Mm. It's different, different, different fighters. You know, like they some guys they kickbox and boxing, and then have a wrestler from Russia, from Chechnya, you know. Like so, that's why I think the training here is good because this guy, all the guys that come from all the world to all stars, right? And everybody train together, so you just can't expect a good training. You get the best of everyone, yeah. like uh, the diversity. I see. Exactly. Oh, okay. So back in Brazil, it's also pretty common to spar hard. Uh, maybe there's a similarity there to training at All Stars. I mean, uh, we've seen the kind of videos with uh, one Les Silva against uh, Fabrice Verdum, I think it is, uh, for yeah. example. Uh, did you train as hard uh, back in Brazil as well? Yeah, yeah. A spar, I mean, a spar when, I, when I started to do uh, hard spar in, in, in All Star, I didn't see the difference because already I, did, I have done this before, yeah, hard yeah. spar, so in Brazil. So, and I remember when I started to do, to do hard spar in, in my gym, Champions Factory in Manaus, back in Brazil, I saw the difference in the fights, you know. So that's why I started to do like hard spar all the time mm. because I saw that how much you grow up, you know. So it's kind of. I think it's the same, the hard sport, but also the different, you have more training partners, you know, yeah. so that makes good here. Would you say that that kind of sparring is necessary to become a champion? Like, because as you mentioned before, some people don't like it and they, they want to have it more like technical and, and uh, they worry about maybe the brain damage or whatever. But do you think that that hard sparring is, is a necessary step to to get to that level? I think it's necessary, 100%, but of course you want to spar with protection, like I said, you need to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you use all, everything that you can use, you use protect the elbow, big gloves, chin guard, and protect the head as well. So you need to to use those protectors. You know? If you don't use, of course you can get some damage. Mm -hmm. And also if you get a lot beat up in the gym, yeah. you know? so it's not good. So <laughs> yeah, you, must, you, level, you, yeah. Yeah, you must go to your level then. But, mm -hmm. Of course, I think hard spot is the key. <laughs> yeah. 
So you're from Manaus originally. Uh, that's where you, you grew up in Brazil, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from Manaus. Actually, I was born in, in Quari, a small city from Manaus. Mm. And then when I was 12, I moved to Manaus. And mm. uh, yeah, and then I lived my whole, the whole life there. <laughs> so th that's like a really, uh, like a pretty small town? In the Manaus Amazon? is really big. It's the capital of Amazonas. So <laughs> it's really <Yeah>. pretty big. <laughs> 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 Why it's okay, you don't know. <laughs> Actually, Manaus is the capital of the Amazonas. It's oh, the okay. capital. The capital yeah, of the yeah, okay, oh. okay. How was your upbringing and how was it to live there compared oh. to Sweden? I think uh, the opportunity in Sweden is better than there, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean... I believe that if I don't want to talk shit about Manaus, about no. my city, but if I stay here 10 years and come back to Manaus, it's going to be the same. Nothing going to oh, change, okay. you know. The people going to keep the same mentality and everything. So yeah. I believe that that's why I always, I was looking to something to move to another, to another country, you know. I always had the, this thing inside of me, you know, mm. to looking for something better, you know. Something bigger. Yeah, yeah something bigger as well. And, uh, I knew that in Manaus I'm not gonna find it. Some people like to be there, you know. They mm. and I saw some many friends that live there, and they are same, and they are they are really good talent, but they are you're losing the chance. They are oh, already lost the chance, you know. They are getting older. They have yeah. a good record, but they're still there. For me, always I was I have something inside in me that go out, try to go to other country, mm. to another country and some do something better. You, you're still pretty young. How old are you right 23, now? 23. Yeah. 23, yeah. And uh, you, how old were you when you started uh, your professional MMA career? So I started training when I was 13 to 14 years old. Yeah. And uh, I did my de profession debut when I was 16. 16, 16. 17, yeah, yeah. 16, 17, oh, around okay. these. And uh, after that, I never stopped like, to, to fight. But it's really hard to fight in Manaus, you know, because the all the organiz organiz it is really hard to fight, man. Yeah. That, that's why I, that, that's I mean, the I guy have for, a. Yeah. The, I think the guy that fight in Manaus or in Brazil, in the whole Brazil, they I think the guy have my respect, because first the guy pay really low, li low money, yeah. and also they pay in tickets. You need to sell your tickets. You know oh, what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you seen this before? No, I don't think so. It's like the, sometimes fighters have that bonus, like they have their purse and then if they sell no, more tickets, they get more, you know. No, it's not this. It's like, no, no, you, they, I'm, it's pay, like I'm paying you in tickets. Oh, in tickets? Yeah. And you need to sell. Oh, oh, oh okay. Now I understand. Okay. So that's really hard. So you get a bunch of tickets and... and if, you need to, if, if, it's if your you, money for the fight. They, if, they all pay yeah, you in tickets, you know. If you don't sell them, you don't get the money. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I so, <laughs> and also, it's, a, it's, not too much, it's not a lot of money, so you, the money you can spend in your diet, so... Yeah. Actually, you fight for free, man, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's why I have the respect for all these guys that fight it there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy, you know. Yeah. And, I think the people that fight in Sweden, they, they must be grateful, man, mm. <laughs> for something. Oh, yeah. Uh, Amazon Talent was one of the organizations that you fought for for a long time, right? Yeah, Amazon Talent, yeah. Because yeah. You, you have only had like four fights in Europe. The rest was, it. because now, for, for the viewers that maybe don't know, you're 11-1 yeah. and one already as a pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I fought in Amazon Talent most of the time, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was an organization of my former coach. And I did like three fights before, the, because I, ha I got the belt from that organization. Yeah. So I did oh, okay. three fights before to get the belt. Yeah. And when I got the belt, I said, that's enough, I need to go out. Yeah. And th it's enough to be here in Brazil, I need to do something bigger now. So, right. And after that, I started to looking, looking up to go somewhere. But I can imagine that I think only Brazilian opponents uh, over there, right? Yeah. And like everyone... If they have maybe a, a rough uh, like uh, environment or, or whatever, and maybe yeah. you have some other talent that is like you, they, they want to build something for themselves, and like that makes everyone dangerous, right? Yeah, I think you can find discover oh find discover find a lot of ta talent in Brazil. Yeah. You know, you have really good guys there. It, because I think to be a fighter, you first need to have a a heart, like a heart fighter. You know. Yeah. So if you don't have that. 
you're never gonna succeed, you know. So in there, all the guys has this, they have this, you know. So I think you can find a lot of good guys and you can invest in this guy, and for sure they're gonna be something big one day, you know. Mm. So I believe one day I wanna do some like project, you know, bring some guys, you know, from there, give the opportunity to change their life. And right. you know, I wanna do that one day. It's something just to be grateful for what I learned there and what they gave to me, you know. And I must give something back. Right. I used to, uh, Charles Oliveira just popped up in my head. Like, yeah, yeah. And he's, he's doing that right now, and also with the help of Dustin Poirier after the last fight. Like he got some uh, funding and he... Foundation, uh, yeah, funding. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool to, to just not forget your, your, your past and, and your heritage that you actually looking to help to exactly like out in the future. When you, when you can give the opportunity, give. Yeah. Don't hold, you know. For sure. You must help your, your friend or something, you know. Yeah. If you have the power to help someone, to give the opportunity to change their life, do it. Mm. You just, this is just going to be good in your life. You're going to get blessed and everything, nothing, you know. I mean... If you do good, you get good. If you do bad, you're gonna get bad for sure. So I believe on that, and uh, I just want to do the the good to someone, change their life one day. Some I want some give something back, you know. Yeah, yeah. When you've been here in Stockholm for one year, you established yourself on the Swedish MMA scene yeah. as a champion. Everyone now in Sweden they know who you are, and and you're. I like treated as a Swedish, uh, one of the Swedish fighters uh, that we root for over here, and uh, also you you have your girlfriend or now she's your fiance. Yeah, is, is that the, the correct <laughs> yeah. fiance? Yeah, 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 it's fiance. Yeah, yeah it's your fiance. Uh, so you're getting married maybe soon also. Two years, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how is life here? The life is amazing, man. I mean, yeah. I'm really I, like since when I moved to Sweden, I'm really happy to live here. I, I love the country, I love the people here, and uh, I love to train here. I mean, it's my it's my home now, so yeah, yeah. I feel re I feel really happy here. Mm. And uh, this is my my town now. It's my home. Right. And now with that momentum, uh, eleven straight uh, victories as a pro, like you're in a position now to to go to a bigger stage. Uh, and, and you're eyeing the UFC. We have UFC London. Yeah. It's officially announced uh, and. Uh, I guess you you want a spot on that card, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I'm trying. I'm, I'm gonna be ready if they call me. I will be ready. And I'm just gonna jump in and make a good fight. Yeah. So I must prepare myself to that. You know, that's why I'm, you need to be ready all the time. So you never know when the chance gonna come. Yeah, I must bite this chance. You know, so when when they come. So yeah. when they come, I'm gonna be ready. Uh, and looking at the UFC, that, that's your only goal in focus, right? Because you have a couple of other different organizations, yeah. Bellator, One Championship. Yeah. They're also big. They also offer much better money than what you get to fight here in Sweden. But you're, you're, you want to go to yeah. the UFC specifically. My right? goal is the UFC. Um, I want to say no for all the organizations. I just want to go to the UFC. That's my goal. And that's how it was my dream when I start to fight, you know. So mm. I must follow my dream. <laughs> right. And will you be ready to maybe jump in on short notice as well if they yeah, call you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, bro, when you're a professional fight, you need to train every day. You need to be ready. That's your career. When you're professional, you train every day. You be, you know. So I'm ready, man. If they guy call me, I'm ready. Just gonna make my weight and mm. and go to the fight. Have you have you got any sense of like if there are an interest out there and maybe the UFC are looking at you? Have you heard something or? <clears throat> I mean, of course they it? are, you know, but I think they are, yeah, of course they are, but all this COVID, you know, is all this shit it's now. Complicated, it, it's exactly. complicated everything about visa and everything. Right. So, I mean, I just gonna do my part, training and be ready. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, there's a matter of time and when the opportunity comes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Looking at the bantamweight division and uh, like uh, even the top guys, uh, how do you feel you you, you match up against uh, those uh, even the top guys? In, I think uh, I beat those guys that are top five, top six. Yeah, I can beat for sure. Yeah. I believe that those I'm that level now, and uh, and that will be more. Mm. Just a matter of time. Just keeping training, keeping development, and all keeping hard training and. Uh, that's my goal, man, to beat this guy, and I just want to fight with the best. 
Kamsat, when he went into the UFC, he did like two fights in a 10 day span or, or something when they were in Abu Dhabi. Uh, maybe you're not going to do just like that, but yeah. uh, are you like looking at Kamsat as an example and, and uh, looking at also a couple of other fighters nowadays? Dana White is saying like, we want guys to stay active and take the opportunities. Would you be willing to like fight pretty regularly if you went into the UFC? 100%, 100%. If the guy offered me to fight in 6-6, six six, I would jump in. Yeah. Like If I just have a fight 6-1 and they need someone featherweight, I will go for sure. Yeah. For and sure. Do, would you want to like go reach the top as quick as possible or like take your time, maybe not take the, the, I mean, the top guys? I learned guys like no rush at all. I mean, yeah. I'm going to fight what they put for me. To, right. to, to, in front of me, and uh, if they put the champ, I'm gonna fight the champ, you know. So, yeah. I mean, step by step, man. They are the boss, they choose the opponent. I just must be ready and beat the guy. Yeah. That's that's all. All right. Look at that camera yeah. and message to Dana White specifically. <laughs> Ahead of the UFC <laughs> London. <laughs> Dana, just send me the contract and let the rest with me. I don't wanna disappoint you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> there you have it. Felipe Lima is ready for the UFC, he's ready to step yes. in, UFC London hopefully, or I'm sure yeah. we're going to see UFC you. Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro, yeah. yeah. 7th of May. That would be perfect as you well. You never know. Never know. <laughs> Felipe, always nice to talk to you. Great and to have Sam, you here bro. on the channel. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you, man. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Good luck in the future. Thank you. Let's get that music contract. Yeah.